Hello, this is the third tutorial for running Continuous Change Detection and Classification, or CCDC, algorithm on Google Earth Engine. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating the Submit CCDC application for calculating model coefficients and spectral change information. The link to this application can be found in the video description below. So the purpose of this application is for actually performing the change detection on traditionally Landsat data. Um, and so when you click run on the um, application, you just see an interface like this, where basically you have um, a few parameters for defining your input data, um, and then a few parameters on um, the CCDC change detection, and then an option on how to define your output extent, um, and then some options just in terms of how you save the data. And so this is really the most computationally intensive part of the whole algorithm. Um, I would recommend starting small and then working your way up from there uh, once you know what parameters you're interested in and things like that. Um, once you have calculated the coefficients and the change, the spectral change information, um, it's relatively straightforward to create maps of change or to do classification. Uh, but this is the part where, where it's really could be time consuming on a computational standpoint. Okay. So uh, the way this works, um, basically, you want to define your, to start your start and end dates of your analysis. Um, so the, by default, it's 2015 to 2021. Um, to get a little bit more time in there, I'm just going to change this to 1000 to 2021. Um, you can optionally filter by day of year. So by default, it does no filtering. Um, you know, if I change this to 200, then I would only keep images between day of year 200 and 365. But in general, uh, because we're modeling um, the seasonality of the data and all that, there's generally not a reason to exclude data unless there's one time a year that's, you know, exceptionally snowy or just has, has bad observations. Um, and then you could, uh, you could optionally define, um, a mask image, so this will uh, only run the algorithm in the pixels that are marked as one or valid. Uh, but you don't really need to do this. This is just an optional thing to speed up the analysis. Um, you can select which Landsat data archive you want to include. Uh, by default, it uses all of them. Um, excuse me, Landsat sensor um, in the archive. Um, you know, recently we've been experimenting with Sentinel One. So you could optionally not use any Landsats and just use Sentinel-1 data. Uh, this is very experimental. You, you can't have both of them. Um, it, it's not set up for that. And to start, I would you know, su strongly suggest just starting with Landsat. So then these are the CCDC change parameters. Um, these are described a little bit more in the tutorial that goes alongside this video. Um, they're also defined in the Google Earth Engine um, API uh, reference. And so if you go up here to the, the docs tab and just search CCDC, there should be only one function that comes up it's under temporal segmentation. Um, and here, these are the exact same parameters that are listed over here. Um, yeah. And so I'm not going to go through every one because, as, as I said, these are described in the written tutorial that goes alongside this video. Um, the defaults are um, work generally okay. Uh, I think these are also the defaults that are listed in the the documentation over here. Um, but yeah, okay. So so this is really important for doing the analysis in your study area is defining where you're actually doing the analysis. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that you could define your output extent. Um, the first is just drawing the extent on the map. So if we select this, uh, you'll see that there's this area selection tool that's loaded. Um, if you rather slowly click and define a box on the map, I think you need to actually click five times for it to, to completely close. Um, so then this creates a bounding box. This becomes your study area. Um, not the most high-tech solution, but it, it works relatively well. 
We also have this global tile system. Um, so this was made for a, a project called Glance out of Boston University um, that's doing global land cover mapping using CCDC. And so this tiling system basically is a way of breaking up the analysis into little tiles. Um, and so this is a simple way that if you know a general area you want to run, you could select this and then what you do is you just click on the map. Oh, whoops, excuse me. This one you, is actually you specify uh, the, the, num the vertical and horizontal labels um, or the gridding system for the tiles. The, the next one is clicking on the map and getting that intersecting tile. So I just clicked here in Missouri, in the United States. Um, you could go anywhere in the world where there's Landsat data. Um, I, I find this to be pretty easy. If you don't particularly care about the exact study area, you could always clip this later. Um, it just gives you a reasonably sized box of an area to run on the analysis on. Um, and then the final, the final uh, options are how, where are you going to export the data? So I didn't mention this, but there are a couple more options for defining multiple tiles. So if you choose the option that's draw multiple tiles on a map, um, it's the same sort of uh, drawing tool as when you're just defining the study area directly. But in this one, you're actually just drawing what over or an, an area and then getting all those overlapping uh, tiles. So in what I just drew, this has um, 12 tiles that are shown. So it's going to submit 12 tasks, one for each of these little areas. Um, and this is useful if you have a large study area. Um, let's say you have a large study area. If you keep exporting just one job of the whole study area and it's, it's failing, um, this is a useful way of breaking it up into smaller jobs, smaller tasks. You can then, you know, join these results later on. Uh, but as I said, this is just a really computationally intensive part of the analysis. So it helps to break it up as much as possible. Um, oh, and the reason I bring this up is because you actually uh, choose an output folder. So if you're exporting, say, 15 or 20 tasks, you just define a folder and then it will save all of those assets to that folder or it'll submit a task to save it to that folder. And so here I'm just going to use a single tile intersecting a point. Um, as I've been doing in the other video tutorials so far, I'm going to do this in um, Cambodia. And so I'm just searching up here to navigate to Cambodia. Like I said, anywhere with Landsat data, that's, that, that includes most of the world. Um, you know, it's going to perform better where there's more data, uh, but you could at least attempt to do this anywhere where there is data. And so I'm just going to go to central Cambodia and click in the middle of the country um, and then click run CCDC. And so this is going to, for this area, uh, calculate the, the spectral change information and the model coefficients that we could then classify in the next step. And so you'll see once you click run that there's a task up here. Um, it has this kind of arbitrary name. Um, you know, as I said before, this exporting is kind of set up to make it easier to export multiple things at once. Um, but if you're just exporting one, just you could change the name to whatever you want. Um, I'm going to choose an asset ID that I could remember to load up later for doing the classification. Um, you could choose whatever you want here. I'm just going to call it. Cambodia CCDC tile because why not? And then click run and you know an area this big this could take a couple hours. Um, as I said, if you do fail, uh, there are some there are some other options of ways to do this a little bit differently in the the written tutorial. Um, and you could an easy thing to start to try is just to try a smaller area to start. Um, and yeah, that's that's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next one, we're going to start to do the actual land cover classification and uh, create land cover change maps. Thanks.